Welcome back TCS viewers. It is Chris Nichols from the camera store. Today we're looking at the Fuji X100Ts. Now it's a brand new camera, but it sure does look like the old ones. So my goal today is to see what they've changed on this camera, what they've kept the same, and really I think I'm gonna focus a lot on the handling and shooting of this camera. So come with me today, we're gonna see what we can find and we're gonna put this camera through its paces. So I wanna get this out of the way right off the bat. The X100T does indeed have the exact same lens, sensor, and processor as the X100S, and so that means the exact same image quality. Now I've kind of bounced this idea around the store. Is that okay or should they have improved it? And it kind of splits people up into two camps. I do kind of feel like, you know, seeing as how this is the third version of this camera, uh, why not improve something a little bit? Maybe better low light performance or, uh, you know, maybe better dynamic range or slightly higher megapixel count. But all Fuji's really done here is improve the firmware to upgrade to 51,200 ISO, but that's just a processing push. It's nothing inherently better in the ISO range. Now, other people on the other side, including my friend here, feel, well, you know, it already took such amazing photos. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I do get that as well. I understand. It just kind of means that this camera is going to be a little bit more like an evolution of an old camera, not really a huge improvement or revolution into new territory. And as you can see, people in this camp, they don't really have a lot of words to back up their statements, do they? So I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm right. I'd like to see this camera do better image quality. Now, one of the things that they have drastically improved is this LCD on the back. It's three inches, and the resolution is a huge jump, well over a million dots, way better than the 460,000 on the X100S. But I do also have a complaint about this screen, and that's that it doesn't articulate, no tilt. And when I'm trying to get shots like this, right up high with my arms out, it'd really be nice to have. It's hard to see without the articulating screen. Also, that would really set it apart from the X100S. It would show us a substantial change. So, I don't know. I wish it articulated. It seems like an oversight. You know, Calgary's actually a very safe city, so I'm going to go ahead and assume this is red paint all over the concrete and not somebody's innards. Oh, we got a beer bottle here in the planter. Typical Calgary. They made it so close to the bin too, you know? Just, just not quite there though. Now by far the biggest change here on the X100T is this new optical hybrid viewfinder. And that's always what's made the X100 series fun. When I look through here, I get my optical viewfinder. And then I can also click it over to a full EVF. And that EVF is much improved. 2.36 million dots roughly, and we're getting a way better lag rate. It's just so smooth. You don't even know that you're using an electric viewfinder, and Fuji's really stepped it up in that department. But you also have this very novel option of going back to optical viewfinder and having a picture within picture kind of view. I get this mini little EV up at the bottom right, and with this I can do things like see my exposure, peaking, punch in manual focus. I mean, it's a nice little feature. That being said, a lot of people who've looked at it have found it very distracting. It's always drawing your eye away, and it only shows the very central portion of your viewfinder. You can turn it off, but I'm going to go ahead and say this. This is my, you know, this is my take on it. It's fun. It's novel. You're going to play with it when you first get it, but honestly, you're probably going to turn it off because that full EVF is just so good. I don't know why I'd even use the optical viewfinder here, guys. The EVFs are getting so good now that they basically make optical viewfinders redundant. So my take on it, novel, but you're not going to use it. All right, so I'm going to talk about the handling features on the X100T next. And you know, this is one of the big benefits of making a third version of the exact same camera. And that's that you can refine the handling to the nth degree, and they've done that. You know, on the back of this camera, there used to be a dial that went around the four-way controller. I hated that thing. You'd always push it when you didn't want to. It was hard to turn. It was a real pain in the butt. Also, the back clicker here for your thumb, it was completely redundant. I hated that as well. And you know what I like about Fuji is we call them, we talk to them, and they say, you know what, Chris Nichols, we really appreciate your opinion. We listen to you when you say things and we change it. Now that's probably bullshit. still. It makes me feel really good to, to kind of feel like they're listening to what I'm having to say. And they've changed all that. They got rid of the dial on the back and they gave us now 
now a proper rotating thumb dial. Big improvements. So here's another great thing I like about this camera now. Hold down the quick menu, a few seconds here, and now I can customize every single function in there. I can take out functions that I don't want to use. I can put in new ones. It really does let me customize it. I love that on the Sonys, and now I love it here as well. One of the other great things is I can go here to the display button, hold it down, and now get up to seven customizable function buttons all over the camera. So what they've done is kept all the things that worked well the same, changed all the things that didn't, and gave us more customizability, which is fantastic. It's a big plus on this camera. And of course, the great thing about Fuji is, if you're an X100S user or you have an older XE camera, they'll probably update and fix those things in those cameras as well through firmware updates. It's fantastic that way. A big bonus as well for using this company. So I'm gonna do a shot here, and I've got you know nice depth and distance. I wanna shoot it wide open to really show off that depth of field. And of course, that's gonna suit the low light that I've got here as well. And as I go to turn this aperture things, one of the things that I really like that, that's changed here is the third stop increments on this aperture ring. The X100S didn't even have half stop. It was just full stop increments. So this makes a lot of sense. I don't know why they didn't do it sooner, but we've got it now. Go to F2, get my focus, nice and easy. So remember how you've always been told as a child not to look directly at the sun? Well, we're gonna do it anyways here just to showcase one of the new features on the X100T, and that is this new hybrid electronic mechanical shutter. Now, of course, the mechanical shutter is the same. We're getting up to four thousandth of a second. It is a leaf shutter though, so remember, it's gonna depend on what apertures you're using, and we do get incredibly fast sync speeds with flash. But the electronic shutter can now go up to 32 thousandth of a second. So I'm gonna do something ridiculous. I'm gonna look directly at that very bright sun. I'm gonna use the electronic viewfinder so I don't burn my eyeballs out. I'm gonna shoot this thing wide open, F2. I know it's crazy, but let's do it anyways. And here we go, we're getting 32 thousandth of a second, F2. And the exposure actually looks really, really nice on that. Now keep in mind that electronic shutter is not the be all end all. It is silent, but if you get any sort of movement in the shot, you're gonna get some rolling shutter. Still, this is a cool feature and we can go either way when we need to. All right, so not terribly exciting, but to round out some of the final features that they've changed on here, yes, we've got the classic Chrome, nobody's gonna care. And uh, we do have a new HDMI port now, they're going to the micro, which makes sense. I guess a lot of people are going that way. But we've also got Wi-Fi, they've added that as well, same as the X-T1, and it's a fairly good interface now. I guess the thing is, I don't sound very excited, and that's because, you know, as a reviewer now, I seem to be talking about HDR and Wi-Fi, sweet panorama, I mean, everything has this now, but yes, we've got Wi-Fi. Okay, so time for a very untechnical autofocus test. I'm gonna go two cameras akimbo here, Chow Yun Fat style, and we're just gonna push the button on both cameras and see if there's a focusing difference. X100S first, and then the X100T. Listen for the beeps. You know, what I'm finding here, guys, not a huge difference. I would say I kind of get a sense that the T focuses just a little bit faster. It just seems to catch in a little bit quicker. Both cameras, though, nice and quick. I don't know. We're not getting an amazing difference here. Hey, it's Jordan. So you know what that means? It's time to talk about the video capabilities of the new Fuji X100T. And I've got to say, they've actually made a few improvements to this, which surprised me. For starters, we finally have manual movie mode. You can set your exposure and it'll stay there. Only drawback is the interface is absolutely one of the worst I've seen. I have to go into the menus to set my ISO and then remember what that was, because I'm not going to see my exposure until I hit the record button. It's really convoluted. Um, as well, you know, the interface problems are one thing. If it was worth it for the image quality we get out, but with this X-Trans sensor, it does beautiful JPEGs, beautiful RAW files when processed properly, but they can't seem to make the video work. You get moiré, you get aliasing coming off of this camera, especially when you're shooting in the 60p mode. So maybe when 4K is an available option and they have to subsample the image less, we'll get better quality. But for the time being, I would never use a Fuji camera for professional video work, and it's solely because of the way it downsamples that image. So, you know, a few nice improvements, but we got a long way to go. Okay, so we're gonna try something a little bit different here this time. We're gonna do our wrap up together so that Jordan gets to express his valid opinions as well. Only had to wait four years. <laughs> I think you deserve it now. So the X100T, Jordan, I mean, we've played with it today. 
I don't know. What do you think about the image quality situation? The well, same sensor. I mean, the same sensor. I think we're kind of hitting a point now where we're going to see this more and more, where we mm. see improvements to the body. But the sensors are really starting to hit a limit for what they can do in full frame and APS-C sensors at this point. I mean, a little more dynamic range and stuff, a little more resolution is always yeah. nice, but this is suitable for pretty much anything anyone's ever trying to accomplish. I guess I just thought that there would maybe be some sort of improvement in some way, some direction, you know? Maybe a new processing engine. You know, Fuji's always very good about new software. But again, I mean, the image quality is still really good. I mean, that's the defining thing. So what they've done is they've made this an easier camera to use. And they've thrown in some nice stuff like the picture-in-picture -picture mode, but what makes the difference for me is that new EVF is really, really nice. It's like looking yeah. through an optical viewfinder if you don't have a high contrast scene. I agree. The EVF is fantastic, absolutely. Um, but again, that almost makes it to me, the picture-in-picture -picture not, not even being that important because it makes it really novel. I mean, we right. talked about maybe like an X-Pro2. Everybody's waiting for an X-Pro2, but are we really going to need an X-Pro2? What's it going to have? With the, the EVF getting so good? Yeah. Well, and it is kind of a novelty, but I have to say my favorite thing in the Fuji line are the cameras with the hybrid viewfinder because mm. they're fun to shoot. You know, are they practical a lot of the time? No, no. but it does really remind me of the old rangefinder experience. And you're and that's right. That's a perk. I mean, a big part of the why, why these cameras sell, I mean, this is still their flagship camera. This is what started the whole thing. Yep. And it's really about the charm of it, right? The it fun is. Of it. Yeah, fair enough. But for me, X100T, I think the T should stand for tilty. This right. thing needs a tilty screen. For the kind of shooting yeah. you're going to use this for, it would make a big difference. What really jumped out to me is something that they could save for the X100, I guess you would be uh, yeah, next, exactly. is I would love to see a push-pull manual focus ring that's mm. actually indexed with distance. So like you, could, field so you could work like a real street photographer, pre-focus at your hyperfocal distance sure. and go shoot. I mean, if we're talking about this camera being charming, you know, this camera yeah. being unique, uh, and retro, why not give it even more features that make it that way? Right? Of that classic rangefinder retro charm. Absolutely, yeah, it makes absolutely. a lot of sense. So, okay, I mean, overall, we've enjoyed the camera. There are some great handling features. Mm -hmm. It's um, an improvement. It's yeah. just not a dramatic one. Yeah, I just, I guess I expected more. Right. I don't see them making, honestly, an X100U or X or whatever. <laughs> oh, it's coming. It. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, yeah they're well. taking our ideas as well from this one. <laughs> well, absolutely. Hopefully they yeah. listen to us from now on. All right, guys, well, thank you very much. We will see you soon, and we did have a lot of fun with the Fuji X100T, even if it is just a minor upgrade. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.